Hello, everyone. We have been introducing you to the various geological periods in Earth's history, but the time has finally come for us to cover perhaps the most interesting, the Cretaceous period. Welcome to our channel here. In this video, you will discover a lot about dinosaurs and the creatures that lived in that same period. Of course, we will also discuss their extinction, but there is actually a secret story there as well. Now you are getting interested, aren't you? Let's get started right away. The Kingdom of Dinosaurs the average person who is not familiar with paleontology probably associates dinosaurs with the Jurassic period, probably because of that very popular movie, Jurassic Park. However, it was actually the Cretaceous period that the dinosaurs had their heyday. It was also during this period that particularly popular species such as Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops and Velociraptor lived. Broadly speaking, the Cretaceous is the time when dinosaurs were most diverse, inhabiting all continents and climatic zones. What was the Earth like during that period of their overwhelming dominance? Of the three periods that made up the Mesozoic era, Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous, the Cretaceous is the longest. It began 145 million years ago and lasted 79 million years. Global cooling began at the end of the Jurassic prior to the Cretaceous. This condition continued until the beginning of the Cretaceous, but the climate was still warmer than today. The Arctic and Antarctic regions were rather similar to present-day Northern Europe, with only occasional snowfall, and permafrost existed only in the mountainous regions. Under these conditions, unique polar forests developed that survived until the end of the Cretaceous period. When the cooling ended in the early Cretaceous, the warming continued, and for about 30 million years, a climate that had to be described as hot spread over almost the entire planet, except for the polar regions. For example, at some points in the tropical oceans, surface water temperatures reached as high as 42 degrees Celsius. Such high temperatures also mean rising sea levels. The Earth at that time had many islands and small continents. For example, the North American region consisted of two continents, Laramidia in the west and Appalachia in the east, separated by a long sea from north to south. Unlike the Triassic and Jurassic, however, if we look at the Cretaceous, especially its later worlds, from space, we would be able to recognize this as the Earth. The contours of the continents are quite different, but they would have looked vaguely familiar. In the shadow of the giants. The climate, warm in the early Cretaceous and only just hot in the middle Cretaceous, was ideal for dinosaurs and their relatives in the air and sea. Dinosaurs reigned over land, but they did not have a surprisingly diverse biosphere to themselves. There are tons of publicly available scientific articles and videos about the Cretaceous if you look for them. The vast majority of that material is about dinosaurs, unsurprisingly. Here, however, we want to focus on the species that lived in their shadows. It's guaranteed to be interesting. Organisms resembling modern mammals appeared long before the Cretaceous period. Recent studies have shown that the split between placental and oviparous animals occurred 187 million years ago, during the Jurassic period. The Cretaceous mammals were generally small and fed on carrion, insects, plants and dinosaur eggs. Their numbers were constantly increasing and, in at least some places, mammals outnumbered dinosaurs. While little is known about individual species, here are a few. Two creatures that inhabited the area that is now China during the early Cretaceous are the small-bodied Eomaya, 
which appears to have been oviparous or viviparous, and the marsupial Cynodelphis. Both are similar to rodents in appearance. Larger species also existed. For example, gobiconodonts, which appeared during the Jurassic period, have been found throughout the Northern Hemisphere. These animals are about 50 centimeters long and resemble opossums. Not content with rotting flesh and insects, they probably preyed on vertebrates such as lizards and small dinosaurs. It is thought that organisms that lead to modern mammals appeared late in the Cretaceous. The discovery of the earliest primates, Purgatorius and Plesiodapus, dates from the late Cretaceous and later the Paleocene. Expert calculations based on genetic data, however, suggest that primates appeared 87 million years ago. It may be that we just have not yet discovered primates that lived during the Cretaceous period. Incidentally, these primates and the aforementioned Paleocene creatures were more like squirrels than modern monkeys, both in appearance and lifestyle. In addition to the appearance of a vast number of mammals during the Cretaceous period, there was another evolutionary miracle. For the first time in its billion years of history, the Earth truly blossomed. While today, the angiosperms are the most diverse of the higher plants, this has not always been the case. The first trees and grasses that appeared on land were more like ferns. The famous tropical rainforests of the Carboniferous were composed of such plants. The forests of the early Cretaceous and later periods are mostly coniferous. When angiosperms, also called flowering plants, appeared is unknown, but probably somewhere around the turn of the Jurassic to Cretaceous periods. For example, Archaefructus and Monsachia, thought to be the oldest flowers, were present in the early Cretaceous. Although not the most attractive of aquatic plants, they continued to reproduce, create new species and expand their habitat. Over the course of tens of millions of years, the offspring of these tiny flowers transformed the flora of the Earth. Fossils from the late Cretaceous easily contain species similar to modern oak, beech, maple and magnolia. Insects appeared along with the angiosperms and their lifestyle became inseparable from pollination. The earliest bees, for example, were present as late as the Cretaceous. If we could get our hands on a time machine and travel back to this era, not only would we be able to ride the Diplodocus, but we might even get to taste the honey from the flowers of prehistoric times. The air was dominated by pterosaurs, such as the famous pterodactyls and the giant Quetzalcoatls, which could reach 12 meters when its wings were spread. The first birds in Earth's history also existed. And you may have heard of Archaeopteryx, which was about the size of a crow and is still considered intermediate between the feathered dinosaurs. In addition to the late Jurassic Archaeopteryx, other birds have also been identified. For example, the Chinese Confucius Ornus had a beak similar to that of a modern bird. The Hesperornis, a waterfowl, lived at sea, and the Ichthyornis, which looked like a duck and had eerie teeth, sprawled out on the beach. Whether Cretaceous birds could have flown is still not fully understood. For example, Hesperornis would have had wings too small to do so. Rahnavis, for example, found in Madagascar, would have lived only on land, like modern ostriches. As for Archaeopteryx, they probably could only glide, like gliders. In any case, it seems that birds did not really take over the sky until after the extinction of pterosaurs. During the early Cretaceous, Ichthyosaurus and pterosaurs dominated the oceans. Then, a strange event called the cenomanian turonian boundary extinction incident occurred, ending their dominance about 90 million years ago. For reasons unknown, oxygen levels in the oceans dropped sharply for hundreds of thousands of years. This had little effect on terrestrial animals, but 27% of marine organisms suffocated to extinction at the genus level. Then it was the famous Plesiosaurus 
that became the Master of the Sea. They first appeared as a species 203 million years ago in the Triassic period, but after the Cenomanian Turonian boundary extinction incident, they were able to rise to the top of the food chain. Other predators include many sharks and the giant Tylosaurus. They fed on something very similar to today's Ostake thighs. Ammonites, starfish, and corals also thrived in large numbers. The end of an era. This has been a wonderful introduction to a world that is similar to and yet different from the present day Earth. Overall, the Earth at that time was much more similar to the present than to the Carboniferous period, but there are differences. In nature, old and new species fought fiercely, the global environment was changing relentlessly, and the fall of the dinosaurs was only a matter of time. The famous meteorite that fell on what is now the Yucatan Peninsula 66 million years ago only accelerated the process. In the 20th century, before the meteorite theory took hold among scientists, some paleontologists attributed the extinction of dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and ichthyosaurs to various causes in the biosphere. For example, it was theorized that the eggs and defenseless young of dinosaurs were actively consumed by a myriad of predatory mammals. It is now believed that the extinction of the dinosaurs was primarily caused by a meteorite, or a sudden climate change following a meteorite fall. Dust covered the sun for a long time, starting a night that did not dawn for years and centuries, and intense cold weather also occurred, causing the extinction of the heat-loving dinosaurs. There is, however, a grain of truth to the outdated biosphere hypothesis. As a result, birds and mammals not only survived, but proliferated, quickly filling the vacated ecological positions. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Sooner or later, a more modern species would have replaced the dinosaurs. Even without the meteorite fall, we would not have seen Plesiosaurus or Tyrannosaurus in modern times. The beautiful but contradictory world of the Cretaceous was doomed to perish anyway. Modern mankind should be delighted with that anyway. Well, it is time to say goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. See you again. Bye.